Herb just came back with their decision, which is to enforce the arbitration award and reinstate Officer Frashar. This is not a surprise to me. There is no precedent for a case like this. As noted on page 18 of the Herb ruling, a uh, case such as this has never been tested in the court and has never been adequately challenged. I will recommend to my fellow commissioners to appeal the, this decision and take it to a court of law. It is time we test what we believe to be true, that it is the city council, it is the police commissioner, it is the chief of police that managed the bureau that set the codes of conduct for officer actions, including the use of force, not the labor unions and their connected institutions. To reiterate what I said on April 12, 2012 in this matter, as police commissioner, I have deep respect for the often dangerous and difficult work that the men and women of the Portland Police Bureau do, and I have been quick to praise their work, their great work, even in the face of criticism. I have backed that praise with tangible support, um, including no cuts to the sworn officer positions at the Bureau, new training center. Um, but as police commissioner, I am also responsible for holding accountable those who fail to follow Bureau policies. One such policy is, the, uh, is Portland's procedures for the acceptable use of deadly force. Our standards for the allowed use of deadly for force are more restrictive than the national standards and the local standards of other police departments. Our policy and training requires Portland police officers to use restraint when they receive a call to check on a person's well-being, as was the case with Aaron Campbell. I believe Frashar violated our policy and training protocols regarding the allowed use of deadly force. I promised in April that I would take this case as far as I can, and it's important that we do so. With the support of my council colleagues, um, we will have a hearing, a public hearing on this within the next 30 days. It's a council decision whether or not to appeal it to the court of law. Uh, my recommendation will be that we do appeal the herb ruling today to reinstate Officer Frasho. Happy to answer any questions, and then I'll turn it over to Jim, who will get into what exactly happened in legal terms. Mayor, you had some time to think about this decision. Have you had any conversations with fellow commissioners? Do you have two other commissioners willing to vote for this at this point yet? Um, I definitely have been conferring uh, with my colleagues on the city council, um, and they, um, as I said back in April, that I would appeal to the a court of appeals if the herb ruled against us, and I thought that they would rule against us. Um, and so I've kept my council apprised um, and uh, definitely in the loop. Um, but I want them to have the time over the next couple of weeks to sit down on their own with our outside council and the city attorney, uh, learn all the details of this matter, and uh, come up with their own decisions. So. I don't speak on their behalf when it comes to their votes. But I do know what I intend to do. Did you get um, input from the city attorney's office on whether you should continue and appeal to the Court of Appeals? Of course. And, and they support your decision? Uh, they work for me. What do you think the temperature of the public is as far as this matter goes? You know, in the last uh, couple of months, um, the P Portland Police Union has uh, presented a very uh, selective and distorted um, story about um, what the investigation and, uh, yeah, the investigation into the use of force by Officer Frashauer. Uh, you all have reported that. We've used restraint because of the various um, legal venues um, that um, this issue has been in um, and because I asked the auditor to do a complete review of the matter um, at the request of the Portland Police Union. I'm taking them you know at their word. They wanted an outside independent review. I'm giving them an outside independent review of this entire matter. Um, so there's a, a lot of this is a complex issue. You're talking about Oregon labor law. This is a complex process. You're talking about 
uh, Oregon labor law. Um, and it has a lot of, um, it's, it's very vulnerable to uh, misunderstanding and is very vulnerable because of all those complexities uh, to be misconstrued. We're going to continue to work on uh, the basis of keeping local control, maximizing the local control of our local police bureau with us. And that, in the end, is what we're fighting for. It is rare that we win arbitrations, and when it comes to the use of force, and when the use of force is used outside of protocol, we need the ability to implement the appropriate discipline. And that's what we're fighting for here. Our ability to manage our own police bureau on behalf of Portlanders who have their own set of values, and they have a right to have a police force that reflects that, and, 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 and a police force that acts in a way that reflects their values. Yes, sir. My, somewhat going over your head with your decision. I mean, well, my frustration is that I've been in this building for almost, I mean, I've been in the building, I worked for city government for nearly 18 years. And during each one of these kinds of issues, the same sort of formula is used to try to overturn what I think is the right decision that was made in Frashar, the right decision that was made in Erickson. Um, so yeah, it is frustrating to have so much of what should be our local control, should be local, to have so much of our local control taken away from us with these arcane um, or misused state labor laws. When after the Erickson shooting, I was chief of staff to Mayor Vera Katz, and we went to the state legislature to get the law changed so that this would stop happening, so we would stop losing so many arbitrations when it came to um, disciplining or considering the use of deadly force by our officers. And we put that law in. The law is, is clear. The legislative intent of that law is clear. Uh, the herb did not apply it. The arbitrator did not apply it. Uh, I give them credit for the fact that they note in their own report that the way they applied or, or looked at the law um, has not been tested by the courts, and I think it's time. If the law, if, if in 2004 this was the, the wrong law or things have changed, then I want the courts to declare that. Um, I want the courts to opine on that. This is different, and, and Jim Van Dyke will tell you how this is different. Um, I'm going to get Jim, if you make your way up to the lec lecture and up here, the podium. In the meantime, Jim, real quick, and, and forgive me if I should know this, like <laughs> you said that the, the uh, city council, you know, have a public hearing, and the city council vote if you want to take this to court or whatnot. In the meantime, does he go back on the job? No. Okay. Yeah, we have 30 days to determine our next steps. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And there, you know, if, if in the end, let me be really clear, because we've gotten pushback on you know, the potential cost of this, but let me be really clear. What we're investing in, what we're investing in here is to have more local control of our very own police bureau. That's what we're investing in. So is that free? No. Does that take time and effort and patience and perseverance? Absolutely. And it is totally worth it, and Portlanders want us to do this. Jim, you want to explain a little bit more about what what happened? Hi, Jim Van Dyke here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, Employment Relations Board for handling this case on an expedited basis. We really appreciate that, and I really appreciate our outside counsel, Howard Rubin, for handling this case for us. Uh, that said, I received a copy of the decision this afternoon and have had a chance to quickly look at it, and I'm disappointed in the result. Um, <clears throat> by way of explanation, our appeal hinged in this case on the application of a statute that's basically an exception to the normal arbitration process. The normal arbitration process, of course, uh, you would submit matters to the arbitrator and that decision would be, finding, would be binding and it would be final uh, regardless of whether the arbitrator got the facts right or wrong or got the law right or wrong. 
But this statute is an exception to that process, and it provides that in certain circumstances where certain public policy goals are paramount, that the arbitrator's ruling cannot be allowed to stand. In looking at the prior ERB Employment Relations Board decisions on this case, we thought that they had not properly applied the law. They had not uh, applied what we thought was the correct legal test, and that was the basis for our appeal. In particular, the legislative history of this particular statute shows that back in the 1990s, during the Officer Erickson arbitration, um, the arbitrator had found that Officer Erickson had not committed any misconduct. Even though he had discharged his weapon maybe 20 to 25 times, I'm kind of guessing at that number right now. Um, and during the legislative session that followed that by a couple of years, the sponsor of this bill stood up and told the members of the legislature that he was trying to undo that decision through the introduction of this exception. Okay? So we fast forward to today, we have a very similar exception in which the uh, case in which the arbitrator did not find the officer had committed any misconduct. We believe that this situation is the similar to what happened back in the 90s with Officer Erickson. We believe that is the entire reason or one of the reasons why this statute was adopted. And with all due respect to the Employment Relations Board, we just feel like they got it wrong this time around. Uh, they did drop a footnote saying that their test, that the test that they have created to decide whether the statute applies has never been considered, accepted, or rejected by the Oregon Court of Appeals or the Oregon Supreme Court. So those bodies have never get, gotten an opportunity to take a look at this. So as I said, we just got this decision. My office is in the process of reviewing it. We'll review that with outside counsel as well. And at that point, uh, we'll be able to better make some recommendations to the city council going forward. Any additional questions for the, our city attorney? Why, why do you think this case stands apart from other cases that have gone to the appellate court and Supreme Court, uh, which limited the board's ruling to, this, um, to the arbitrator's decision, not the conduct of the employee? Well, because I believe those cases didn't address the point that's directly at issue here. If you'll notice in the ruling, what the Employment Relations Board said is, this statute doesn't apply if the arbitrator found that the officer had not engaged in any misconduct. Okay? But that's exactly what happened in the, office, in the Officer Erickson case. The arbitrator found that the officer didn't engage in any misconduct. So when I look at that legislative history and say, and it says that that uh, statute isn't supposed to apply in these, doesn't necessarily apply in these situations, or I mean it it's applies in this situation, and ERB doesn't, um, you know, apply that legislative history or recognize it or explain it adequately, in my view, uh, then I think that creates some confusion. And frankly, I just think they got it wrong. The name of the senator. Uh, that was Senator Bryant back in the 1990s. And, and, and his testimony is quoted in the, in the legislative history. But what you can't get from the, from the reading is that it related back to the Officer Erickson case. It just refers to a Portland case. Thank you. Other questions? All right, thank you all very much.